we'll we'll give us a tour, man. Yeah, Let's go. Say, we'll yeah. Go Dang, son. So yeah, this is this is I, I like again. Hey, what's going on, guys? Brian here, Brian's Almain. It's trust you guys are doing well. All right, we're gonna jump right on into it here with none other than Caleb and Brittany Almond of Almond Landscape over there in beautiful Fairfield County, Ohio, to see their 70 by 120 new shop that they just built on a beautiful three acre piece of property. Now, here's the deal: the shop isn't finished just yet. However, the shell is up, the building is going uh, really, really well, the roof is up, the concrete's poured, they have a lot of progress on this thing, and they're busy moving into it as we speak. So here's the deal. This thing is not totally finished, obviously, but here's the deal. If you guys want to mark your calendars for none other than October 1st, they're going to be opening it all up to the greater lawn and landscaping community to swing on by and you guys can check out the whole thing as they do their grand opening. Really quick, to make this happen, as you guys already know, if you've been watching the series the whole way through, we got to say a big thank you to the shop tour sponsors, which are Equipment Offender, Kujo Yardware, Steel, and Yardbook. Now, talking about the productivity and profitability that Caleb and Brittany Allman will experience with this brand new shop, you guys can experience the same thing with a good quality CRM. A lot of you guys know that we have been rocking Yardbook for over four years now, and it has helped us to grow our company, to understand our numbers, to route, to plan, and to upsell all of our customers, and so much more. They have fertilizer tracking, chemical tracking, you guys can quick dispatch your routes, you can charge cart on file, and so much more. Now, if you guys need a good CRM outside of your accounting software like a QuickBooks, I would encourage you guys to check out Yardbook. And the best part, it's absolutely free. All right, guys, without further ado, let's jump into it here with Caleb and Brittany Allman all the way down in Fairfield County, Ohio to see their brand new shop. Hey, what's up, guys? Brian here, Brian's Law Maintenance. All right, we're going to jump right on into it. We are over here in Carroll, Ohio. We're hanging out with none other than Caleb and Brittany Allman. How are we doing, guys? What's hey. up, man? Hey, so we are here checking out your guys' brand new shop and the whole shop tour that you guys are going to be doing with us here over the next few minutes. Holy freaking cow. Okay, I got to pan really quick before we jump into it. Look at that. What the heck? I know you guys are gonna love this. Hey, big thumbs up if you guys appreciate the video already. Um, so let's do this. We'll take it away really quick. Who are you guys? Where are you at? Where are we from? What are we doing? And this we're gonna is jump. All you, honey. <laughs> hey, everybody. Uh, we are Caleb and Brittany Almond. We have a company called Almond Landscape. Uh, we're a landscape design build company here in beautiful Rolling Hills, Fairfield County, Ohio, uh, Carroll, Ohio, and. Uh, we have been working towards our uh, career dream and uh, buying commercial property and building our own commercial facility, our own commercial shop on it to host and to house our uh, landscape company and a few other ventures we have going on. Uh, the, the quick, I guess, kind of rundown here of the whole property, we bought three acres uh, here in Carroll and we got it zoned commercial. We wanted to make sure we were safe to run here as a business instead of a neighbor complaining, you know, running under a residential, you know, lot license or whatever, and so we we went through the whole bit to get commercial, you know, zoning and all that stuff, and uh, that way we can't just be shut down by somebody. We're allowed to be here and operate as a business, and uh, that was like one of the first moves we wanted to make. And then after that, we built uh, we built our building here. It's on three acres. Our drive it's about 600 feet front to back and a couple hundred feet wide, whatever. Uh, future plans. The, yeah, go ahead. Close to the highway. Yeah, and so with us a shop, things with shops that were very important to us, and we were, we've been looking for three or four years to find the right piece of land, and or shop for that matter, and so a thing that was really important and really big deal to us was something really close to the highway, so guys aren't sitting in, you know, paying a bunch of windshield time for guys to, you know, we could have bought cheaper land farther out into the country, but you have to run the ROI on that of like, is the cheaper land worth over the whole career or your whole span of career of paying guys to sit in front of a windshield or a steering wheel for an extra 20 minutes a day. You know, two or three guys, you know, for even 10 minutes a day extra drive time, I guarantee if you run the math, if you're trying to run crews especially, you can make that more expensive mortgage work out or it's worth it uh, to pay and build into something that's gonna have equity instead of just setting your money on fire paying drive time. No, I get it, it's a cash flow thing. I totally understand it's easier to, Easier to do that slow trickle of money out, you know, with a farther drive. But really, if you're going to be in business, you got to try to consider everything from those standpoints. Uh, but you got to, you know, and like I say, with equipment and everything else, you know, buy the best thing you can afford at the time and upgrade down the road. This has been 20 years in the making for me, so it's one of those things I'm really uh, at the point where we're really trying to do everything right the first go on this one. So we've been renting for 15 years a facility, and uh, it's time to really make it happen. So. Hey, really uh, quick. Yeah, really Brian, quick. where you want to go? The other place that you're at right now, where are you guys coming from? Because uh, you guys are like the big kid contractor, right? Like, yeah, right. And by the way, just as a personal friend, dude, I'm so excited for you guys right now. Like, babe, this is pretty dope. I know, I'm kidding. 
I, I was like, I'm, I'm like not emotional right now, but I'm like, holy cow, it's kind of surreal. It's, and just like as a friend of your guys, like, dude, you did it, man. Like, great job. It's huge. It, and thank you. It's, we've we worked. We have a storage unit that's yeah, 10 we were, by 20. No, it's 1545. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great, no, the Taj Mahal. It feels Sorry. like 10 no, by well, 20. No, in fairness, the amount of actual floor space available still is about 10 by 20. Maybe, right, maybe right, about right. 200 square feet left. That's awesome. Uh, we made Maybe the you'll most see of it. That, There's but... like a loft and stuff inside. Yeah. So. And one of those things, like that rent is really cheap compared to the mortgage here, but at the same time, like Andy Mulder says it best. He's like, if you spend time looking for stuff, you're wasting time. And we're all the time in that tiny space trying to cram our our, our entire company into this tiny space. Guys are constantly digging through stuff, looking for things, and just wasting tons of time. So the money we save there in rent at the moment, we're, throw, we're setting on fire out the door, not in windshield time in this case, because it's still close to the freeway, but we don't have all the supplies there that we need. Right. We don't have on-site fuel, restrooms, running water. We have electric, but that's it. And it's real simple, low voltage, or, you know, low, low amp service. So- I wash stations. It would get for, you know, <laughs> for just in case you ever get gas in the II. Best YouTube video ever, I heard. Well, well okay, so I'm gonna turn the camera this way. So yeah. just so if you guys wanna, no, for for perspective, it's a three and a, three and a half acres. Three acres flat. Yeah, three it's acre. actually two point nine nine to be overly technical. So nice, beautiful rectangle. This will all get cleaned up over time, obviously. Yep. And septic goes up in here. It looks like. Yeah, that that is the sacred land. We can't touch <laughs> it for any reason, says the county. So it's got to sit there until we get the septic in. There will be a pond in the bottom down here. We are going to do a pond at some point. Cool. Uh, cool. I don't know when exactly. Uh, Brian drove over our water crossing here coming in. I thought, oh man, you're gonna get that nice new truck so dirty. <laughs> but uh, we will we will upgrade the driveway and put culverts in. I've got to do a drainage improvement project running uh, to the you know the, to the north uh, west there at some point. There's yep. no shortage of stuff to do here at the moment. But yeah, that's the kind of the front acreage we want to we do want to do a few things in the front like environmental steward wise. Like we want to have like a pollinator uh, prairie mix out on the knoll out there. Uh, we got a lot of really cool plans for this place. We'll show you some plans we've got for it. Uh, it's kind of the master concept. Going into it, the building itself is a 70 by 120 building with 18 foot ceilings. And we went ahead, again, the philosophy is on this thing, anything that can't be upgraded later, like I can put cheap windows in now and when cash improves down the road, upgrade to windows, but I can't ever raise the roof. I can't raise the ceiling height. Sure. We can't ever not Put, or we can't ever put you know radiant floor heating in the offices that can never be upgraded so the things we can never go back and change we're gonna we're biting a bullet and doing it now and we'll upgrade the things like doors and stuff like that down the road so okay. that's our philosophy going into it hence why it's so big uh and and, and a nice building and I, I and it's not bragging i'm so humble and, and and so i you know i'm just humbled to, that god has granted us the ability to make this happen and so all glory to god in that for sure by the way, 70 by 120? Yes, sir. 70, okay. Yep, 70 by 120. I think you mentioned uh, that, but just really quick. Yeah, 70 by 120, 18 foot ceilings. And then we also, another thing, I went ahead and this was a bit, bit of a debate back and forth. We did scissor truss, which you'll see, which it, it has a slight arc to it. Gives just a little bit more headroom in there. But again, that's something we could never upgrade down the road. And so I wanted to do it. All uh, right. We wanted to have the porch uh, coming in for entrance. We're going to have employee parking and guest parking out here on a big, awesome retaining wall we're going to build for parking lot area. Uh, and then our main front entrance, which goes into the offices, which are about the front third of the building. And then the back two thirds are going to be Almond Landscape and the Hardscape Academy training area. So, uh, well, we'll give us a tour, all. man. Yeah, Let's go. Say, we'll yeah. Go so we, we wanted everything here to be super ergonomic and for it's, it's funny. We've got all this room at the same time, like, man, it's filling up so fast. Sure. And so like, we want everything to feel really comfortable and good. And so we're really trying to put a lot of thought into the design and ergonomics and layout and turning radius or radii, if you will. Um, so we wanted the porch post nice and far apart, lots of room, big, nice front double door entry, uh, you know, like commercial office doors. I was hoping those were going to get installed today, but uh, that, that didn't happen. We ran out of money here. You know what I'm saying? Like with, with <laughs> lumber prices and steel prices, we're out. Right there. Yeah, there you my, go. <laughs> my thumb's all sliced up. That's the piece of metal that got me there today. Sl sliced the blood everywhere around right now. But... Yeah, yeah. You ever got to sue these owners, man? Get some money out of them. Really, yeah, I need a settlement of some kind here. So, do we want to go inside? Well, we'll go inside. Um, you want to cruise around should, outside? Well, let's hit on things. Thing yeah, what is this? Uh... Uh, yeah, big old one hitter for the big opening party. So. <laughs> Jeremy Swire called it that, and I can't ever see it now. I'm not thinking some giant bong or something. <laughs> but it, this is a rainwater harvesting tank. Uh, Advanced Drainage Systems ADS has been a wonderful partner of ours in this whole project. 
and we're gonna be doing some really cool drainage projects here on the property and all that. This is a rainwater harvesting tank. This is a 5,000 gallon tank. We're gonna be burying this out in the side yard and collecting uh, rainwater from the roof. And we're gonna plumb this in with a, a friend of ours, a company Rain, called Rain Brothers. They do cisterns and stuff like that. So we're partnering with them to do uh, rainwater harvesting on the property here. And we're gonna plumb that out and we're gonna wash trucks with it, water plants in the holding yard and a bunch of other really cool stuff. So really excited to be able to harvest all this awesome rainwater yeah. uh, that, uh, that we collect off of here. So. Again, total chaos in this place at the moment because we're trying. We're we're about two or three weeks from day-to-day -day operations being in here. The offices are, are not done anymore. They won't be done till the fall. Uh, but we're working out, and we're still working out trying to figure out what our staging looks like. Um, we've got our fencing almost completed. Um, we want it to be a really secure. I don't know where you're going, Brian. Sorry. I'm following you. I'm a YouTube rookie here. Bear with me. Uh, but we want it, We want the place to be really secure, so it'll be locked up, full security systems, uh, machine gun bunkers, sniper nests, the whole bit. Right, lasers. Uh, machine gun nests and sniper bunkers, that's what I meant. Um, but we wanted to, and see, I gotta put a keeper you on You just that. hit your brand yeah. new building? That's why we can't have nice things, Brian. <laughs> the and bank is gonna watch this. <laughs> like, their money oh back. my gosh, call that note. So, uh, you know, another thing too, again, like, this property has a, a it's a long backstory, but um, my grandpa, long story short, planted with his church most of the trees, if not all the trees around this place. And so I was really careful to uh, they were, you know, planted thick, you know, densely across here. And so in the winter time, we went through and thinned out about every other tree, so that these beautiful white oaks and that buckeye tree, uh, and ash, and there's a uh, another oak back there so that these things reach like full maturity and we'll keep thinning them out as these trees grow and mature and be really really broad and beautiful like these white oaks are going to be phenomenal specimens down the road so i really want to make sure that we're taking care of these things and pruning and clearing things out so that uh you know this is a really a stately looking property down the road so really excited about that uh, so much, again, so much going on here. We're really still not sure how we're gonna do all of our, our, our yard layout yet. We're still just trying to get a feel for the property. So right now we've got stuff just scattered everywhere. Uh, again, we're not in here for day-to-day -day operations yet. We're about two or three weeks out. As soon as we finish our fence project, and as soon as we uh, get our security system in, we're moving in for day-to-day -day operations. Okay. Uh, so that's the setup there. But, um, you know, one thing too, you wanna, you, for the, the horticultural ner nerds out there, like, we want to be careful with the tree root system. So a lot of this, this work out here has been detrimental to these tree root systems. And anytime you start staging materials and things like that on top of those root zones, you're compressing those soils and you're potentially you know, harming those trees down the road. So I am conscious of that and we're trying to get this out of here. I want to try to preserve this space here and then we're going to make the industrial hell back here and just do all our storage and all this stuff will get moved on to here. But wow. we're, uh, we're still just trying to get all, all this stuff figured out. So. Uh, this is my father-in-law's dozer. Uh, he's got some land in southern Ohio that uh, he bought this to work with, and then we uh, have the blessing of having that here to, to work with as we need. And then we, uh, when we do other bigger landscape projects or whatever, we'll rent that from him to put it on those projects. Um, that crazy robin, or the bird nest, this crazy robin built a nest. I don't know how the snakes and raccoons haven't found them yet, but there's a bunch of baby robins in Gosh, there. Gosh, everybody's moving in. <laughs> yeah, right. I might move in once this place I is done. I need to find out who to invoice for the rent there. <laughs> uh, but, you know, the things we've got to really figure out here is like where, and I've been talking to the guys about this, of like, how do we, how are we going to stage attachments, and where are we going to put surplus block in our tree storage area, and, you know, plant holding yards and things like that, and an area for compost, and there's just so so much stuff we got to figure out how we're going to lay this out so it makes the most sense for again we got all this room but at the same time like man it's filling up fast and we're so we're just trying to work through this and think all these things through uh we got the spoils pile here that's leaving uh for folks building you might consider uh this is in this project we use a ton of this uh i mean i ton literally there's a thousand tons of this is a uh, number two recycled concrete so um uh, it's it's pulverized crushed up concrete and it's about half the cost of limestone at the moment you know anno domini year of our lord here uh 2022 so who knows how much it'll be next year but the the, the downfall of that is sometimes you get some of this wire mesh in there and stuff like that as tire poppers so but it, the cost is way cheaper and then we'll just top dress it with a nice gravel uh once we're nearly completed with the project but things like that it's really cool to be able to recycle the concrete that's awesome instead of it going to a landfill like that's pretty cool and uh and then it's a, a cost saving a cost benefit too so that's really awesome all this surplus soil all this you know spoils i guess from from cutting out for our parking areas and staging areas uh, that's all going to be 
um, uh, hauled out at some point here. And uh, what else? Yeah, shoot. You know, one of the, uh, this big white oak here, I'm gonna try to preserve us, even though we're being really hard on the root zone. We're gonna do some vertical mulching and some other stuff like that to try to help the root zone uh, recover a little bit from some of the stress we put it under. But that's gonna get a picnic table back there, just kinda like a little picnic area. I'll have uh, some of my tree care buddies stop and dump a load of uh, chips in there and we'll just kinda mulch that over and make it like a little like retreat area. That's pretty cool. Respite or whatever. So this is getting into the main like yard or area and we've gotta be, we're really limited here on turning radius, so we got to be really careful with what we put out here and how we how we store materials. Most of these aggregates, most all this aggregates and loose materials is going to go against that southern fence. Okay. And this is going to be pretty open because we need this for turning radius. Uh, at some point, this will all be concreted in, I imagine. Not yet. I'm going to pour a 20-foot apron off the building here this whole distance, uh, the, the whole length of the building. Uh, but I've got to get all our drainage, our storm drainage infrastructure in first because we've got, we drained that back 20 acres there, runs through the property here. So I got to get a, a bunch of drain pipe through here. And again, Advanced Drainage Systems has been a wonderful partner with getting all that pipe in here. So thank you to them. Um, other than that, concrete was just poured in the building Tuesday this week. So, uh, what, four days ago? We can drive on it in three more days. I can't wait. So we're going to start putting some stuff in there. It's going to be really exciting. A few things on the, on the shop layout, the yard layout. Uh, you know, on-site fuel, this is one of the, this is funny, this is the silliest thing, but this is true kid contractor status for me. I am so excited to have on-site fuel. It's just the greatest thing. Our guys aren't going to the gas station anymore. We have fuel in-house. We can fuel up machines, fuel up, you know, do our fuel cells. We have our own fuel now, and it's the greatest thing. I'm not paying guys to go to the gas station anymore. A truckload of guys sit at the gas station. Policy is going to be filling up at nighttime when they get in in the evenings. Everybody's in a hurry to go home. So we want to fill in the evening. In the morning, not everybody's in a hurry to get the job site. And we've got great team, don't get me wrong, but just still nobody's in a big hurry to get the job site, but everybody's in a hurry to get home, right? Right. So we want fill ups in the evening done. So we fill up fast, we don't dilly dally, we're onto it and we're productive with our work because everything we're doing is costing more and more and more and the, the need for efficiency and productivity is greater than ever. Uh, I so, love it. <laughs> so now that's the thing. Um, we're gonna have a fence cut come across here. We've got a 30-foot sliding gate across this area. We we really were kind of really kind of stuck here as far as like how the layout would go. I initially was gonna have this fence go out and clear across the front about midway through that field, but I didn't want a big chain link fence running right through the middle of the property. And I really struggled with this and thought a lot about it. And ultimately we're we're settling on the fence is gonna come across there, right to the left of the man door there, 30-foot opening, um, about 10 foot off the building, sli big sliding gate. And that gives us room to get in here, pull up, back in the building, radius to turn in the building, whatever the case is, um, you know, all that. So that that actually install is starting tomorrow. Really excited for that. So that thing gets up and we get security and we can move in. So we've already got electric. Uh, so that's really exciting. So that's the outside area. All right, guys, we're going to take a quick commercial break here before we see the inside of the shop tour here with Caleb and Brittany Allman. By the way, are you guys enjoying it so far? I know I am. It's totally building the dream. And you know what? These guys are so deserving of it. Now, here's the deal. We want to say a big thank you again to the shop tour sponsors, which are Equipment Defender, Cujo Yardware, Steel, and Yardbook. Now, I know we talked about Yardbook at the beginning of the video for just a couple quick minutes there, talking to you guys about having a good CRM for your business. Now, here's the deal. I know there's a lot of folks out there promoting a lot of different things, and you know what? Yardbook is what I've found to work best for my company. If you guys are doing between zero and a half a million dollars, you guys have one to two or three crews, I think that's the sweet spot for Yardbook, and it has been a game changer for my business. A lot of you guys know there's a lot of different great features to Yardbook, like scheduling your work and your jobs, having a credit card on file for your invoicing, quick dispatch for your routes, the measuring tool to map out your mulch or maybe even a parking lot if you guys are going to be plowing snow and so much more. Now, I know a lot of you guys are familiar with having good accounting software like a QuickBooks, but I would encourage you guys to marry that up to a good CRM like a Yardbook. Unfortunately, we don't have a code for Yardbook because it's absolutely free. All right, so if you guys wanna check them out, I'll leave a link in the description down below. If they send a follow-up survey or email, let them know that we sent you, all right? Without further ado, let's jump back into it and see the rest of this beautiful shop tour over there in Fairfield County, Ohio with none other than Caleb and Brittany Allman. So going into the building, this will be <clears throat> the entrance point that most of our guys and most everybody's gonna use. It's gonna be inside the yard and uh, it's gonna be kind of the main point of entry, I believe. So as we come in here, our awesome layout. This is the whole inside of the building. And um, 
As we come in that door there, and Brian, you can leave that open if you need the light. Nope, you're good. And I can open up all those doors actually if you want more light in here. No, you're looking great, bud. Cool. No worries. Dang, son. So yeah, this is this is I, I like again, you know, all glory to God in this because this is uh, just something I've been working for my whole life. Dude, and now it's allowed to happen. Serious outfit, bro. Yeah, buddy. Like this is pretty dope. <laughs> It's uh, now taking applications. I'm coming down to work here. Yeah, what the heck was that? <laughs> There's a bird up there. I, they fly into the wall. Good something Lord, might have. Like somebody threw a, a grapefruit at the wall or something. So, the layout <laughs> in the building here is this front 30 feet is going to be offices. Uh, this right here is going to be a this will be a door that's going to go into uh, our uh, break room for the guys, and it'll be a, a small kitchen and uh like a kind of a whole setup there just kind of a, a place for guys to hang out and all that stuff that back corner there is going to be like kind of our kids office uh an area for cause we're going to be here a lot so uh the kids uh you know we have three kids they're, they're all young uh we're gonna have kind of their own little office area for all three of them to hang out in with a tv and tablets and coloring books and all that kind of stuff and, and any of our guests that come by or whatever uh then the front entrance that's gonna be a lobby area then across here uh, which is really cool. It's going to be our podcast studio uh, and media studio right in this right in this area here. A conference room uh, and then a few open offices. A couple op open up couple open office desks there. Brittany and Liz are in Brittany and I's office area right there. My office is there in the corner with the big you know you know office Ooh, in the corner right. Fancy, yeah, big fancy. Executive there. So, C suite over here. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, so our, both of her and I's offices are in there. It's, it's pseudo shared. Uh, we've got a partition door thingy uh, that'll close and, and go between those things. Uh, so, Britt, in the offices, our office is in the back left corner there. Yeah, so um, they're like 16 feet wide for the barn doors. That, sorry, 16 feet wide for the barn doors that we bought that are going to separate our offices when we're mad at each other. That would be cool. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I meant I meant the barn doors were cool. Not when you, all the time. I, meant, I meant the barn doors were cool. Not that you're mad at each other. <laughs> <laughs> that never happens with running a business. For what those barn doors cost? I hope <laughs> never. <laughs> yeah, for what those barn doors cost, I hope we're mad at each other enough that they actually get used. Soundproof. So she found this these beautiful set of two doors with wood and glass and all this craziness and whatever. Okay. <laughs> Okay, I like it. Awesome. Okay. Imaginary um, barn doors. Right here is our media room. So this is the podcast. Oh, that's right. I said that it's swapped. It doesn't matter. Right here. Conference room, media room is here now. So yeah, and that'll so it's be. It's going to have a glass window on the front so you can see in and out while people are recording. Oh, that'd be cool. Um, I don't know what he went over, but over up there is the kids' room. We want to have a place for our kids to get off the bus and hang out and do homework and they're just part of our business and our lives and I don't want to exclude them from that. So they have their own room. And we'll have a full kitchen, so I don't know. I, we tried to cover everything here except for a shower. Yeah. That's pretty much. Wow. Sleep yep. here. I don't know. Um, mechanical bathroom. We'll have space here for cubicles. So I'm going to do cu two cubicles, one for our media guy and then one for our project manager. He can come in and out and make phone calls and do what he yep. needs to do from there. And also the offices, this has been built with the intention of, oh, yeah. there are going to be nine foot ceilings in the office, but the reason we went taller with the building was so that the mezzanine can be built out into future offices. Oh, so wow, yeah. For future growth of the company. So we could fill that completely out with offices. I think what we'll do is probably build half of it out with offices at some point, and then the other half is going to be kind of a lounge, kind of like Greg Woodstock's at yeah. the Pond Guys in Chicago. Uh, that crazy like employee just awesome like rec room kind of thing. That's kind of what I envisioned just on a micro scale Not on a Greg Woodstock scale, but an <laughs> almond skit. the Cena scale uh, Put a pool table up there some cool stuff like that. That would be really dope Yeah, the underside of the offices will look like a Chipotle restaurant just, <laughs> just black painted, you know mechanicals and all that so it look pretty cool modern all that junk um, yeah, really, there. really quick because I watch on Instagram. So this concrete line over that's the quote-unquote like office space yeah. um, Heated floors, right? Yeah. yeah, we went ahead and did, and you can they see the pipes here. where they that's come up fun. through here. But that's again one of those upgrades that we could, you can't ever put that in again after the fact once the concrete's poured. So the radiant heat in the floor is one of those things we, it was an upgrade, but we can never go back and redo it or add it in later. So we wanted to just go ahead and bite the bullet and do it. And so, and so at a minimum, we were at least going to plumb it, and so it wasn't a working system. Right. But we were able to find a deal where the guy could hook everything up for us and get it running. So. Uh, that is the system over there. That's the manifold. Yeah, is the right word. <laughs> and that's the that'll be the mechanical room where all the water and electric and everything comes into the facility. It's ran off of natural gas. Yeah, we have natural gas out here, which is another just wonderful blessing there. This is the, the there, underneath this four inches of concrete. There's this crazy foam. It's called Crete heat. 
and this is all laid down under like a giant Lego pad, and then all those tubes are laid all out through there, and they like lock in there, but then there's a pump that runs hot water through there, heats the floor, and people say you don't even end up turning on your, your furnace or whatever. Wow. Uh, her parents have it in their house, and it's awesome. So it was a little bougie, and but also we figured. Well, we I didn't want furnace. concrete floors to be cold. Like right. concrete floors are just cold in general, and I didn't want that for as many, yeah. many hours as we put in. And with the finish, we had these finish super smooth. They're obviously super dirty right now, but these are like polished. They're not polished. I'm sorry, but it's I forget what the finish is they call it. It's just a smooth. They clean finish. up and look super cool again, like a Chipotle floor kind of deal, Panera, whatever. No, I like it. Um, yeah, so that's that. Offices again, just. Uh, uh, you know, kid contracted podcast and studio media room and all that junk, and then a conference room uh, that we have available for people to come and you know do do whatever with uh, a conference room as they might need for for traveling professionals or whatever in, in our whole green space, right? <laughs> Uh, so yeah, so that's the office. This place is huge. No, it's like really Jimmy's Wonka, like, but like Amen HQ Wonka. <laughs> it's awesome. It's so cool. Yeah, thanks, huh? Yeah, Amy's like that Echo. What in the world? Yeah. So yeah, so this is uh, so this the, is pretty cool. So the front third space. here is all office space, and then Correct. take me to the to the back spot. Yeah. Because um, paint the dream here, because this is going to be really cool as this unfolds over the next couple of years. Right. Um, Oh, is that Edison Spike over there? Actually, here, there's the there's the new off. That's the new office layout right oh, there. there. So, uh, that's kind of how that whole the whole office is going to lay out for now. So, I like it. Subject to change, but I think that's our final revision supposedly. So, okay. So these two garage doors are on in landscape. So the contracting company will operate out of these two doors, uh, and then in between the second door and the third door, we're going to do like. The shell, I don't like the Home Depot shelving. Like you know, they have like, yeah. whatever, whatever that's called, pallet shelving, um, to separate from the Hardscape Academy Training Center. So that's going to be in the back third. The back third, they get that whole area. And so we want to get some, we want to do a set of bleachers in the back, and then we'll bring in material for whatever it is we're building, whether it's a grill island or a retaining wall or whatever we're teaching at the time, and we'll just be able to bring everything in in the winter where it's warm. And that'll be fun. And host live demonstrations, live training classes, things like that. So it's gonna be really cool. Holy cow. Right? Yeah. I don't even know what to say right now. I'm like, uh, yeah. none of that I've got a good follow-up question, but I'm just kind of like blown away. So the, in the inside of the building is gonna be, we're gonna spray foam, which this is a lesson learned right here, right now. Give your building a few rains because I got a couple leaks here and our builders are great and they'll take care of that no problem, but I'm glad we didn't spray foam immediately because we'd never know about that until there was a rot issue in 10 years. Oh. So give your building a few rainfalls before you foam it in or do whatever so you can locate those problems and fix them. Um, but yeah, so the, the big goal here is just, again, lots of room to pull trucks in, to work on stuff, and especially in the winter time and do fabricating. We're gonna have some awesome workbenches and total full on tool sets and things like that to give us plenty of room to work. And then in the back, again, Hardscape Academy training area, which is gonna be just, we'll bring material in, stone in, and we'll build stuff and do trainings and shoot content and shoot training videos and, and all that. We'll also, like I said, we're gonna spray foam this thing uh, with insulation, closed or open cell, I can't remember. And uh, then we're gonna line it with a white steel so we get, you know, really great, uh, uh, really great optics in here, and we'll we're have, still trying to we figure out the lighting. We to go in here for the summertime, and then yeah. natural gas two Peters. Okay. Yeah, for the, for the heating. So uh, hopefully with the spray foam. Again, Andy Mulder did it in his shop, and, and says he's barely got to turn the furnace on in it, which I sure hope uh, that's kind of the deal with this big building, big space. Uh, but really, I, the biggest thing I'm looking forward to is not having to work on machines on my back in the gravel in wintertime, because I've done it for 15 freaking years. Amen to that. Amen to that. So that is like <laughs> going to be the coolest thing ever. I think you just built everybody's. Yeah, you just built everybody's dream I, there. Well, it was funny. Bo, Mr. Bo came in the other day. His truck is due for an oil change, and uh, he came here to do it, but the concrete's still so new, we didn't want to pull the truck in yet. And so we're out there in the shop yard on our backs, still changing oil, you know, and it's like we 8,000 square feet of concrete. We're still on our backs in the gravel. The oh, yeah. Out, so. I, I was fixing a snowblower once under the Home Depot canopy <laughs> at 2 in the morning. Like, you got to do what you got to do. And I needed, I needed some dry area, so that's yep. all I could come anything, up with. Well, actually, and actually, you had to take that story further with Bo. He actually pulled it up under the porch, the truck. Oh, yeah. Because it was raining a little bit. So at least, you know, at least we're out of the rain, but still on our backs in the gravel. So. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's the big setup here. One thing I wish we'd have done, or a couple extra things I wish I would have done, and I was held back on doing it. <laughs> oh no! Um, is I wish we'd done more windows. Who's I over wish there? We had more natural light in here. <laughs> um, I think I, the I was going to ask. The windows look pretty good. I'm glad that you guys did them up top. I heard don't put them down low because people could break in. 
Yeah. Something like that. They call those high bay windows. High bay. Yeah. And I wish we'd have done one about every section of uh, a building. So hindsight being 2020. I uh, wish we'd have done more, but that's okay. But again, that is one thing we can we can add in the future. Again, that was one of those things I wasn't gonna, that's not a hill I was gonna die on, you know, in that <laughs> argument, because I know we can add those in down the roads when we're trying to, believe it or not, we're still trying to be somewhat cost conscious and and, uh, and all that, so. Pretty cool. Uh, quick question, when are you guys doing the, the grand opening? So this is, uh, this is all really rough, but you guys gotta frame the offices, do all the finishing. Like you said, you're gonna wrap the whole shell inside, insulate. Um, I think I'm asking because you guys were saying so I don't yes. was it public knowledge yet? What are we doing here? <laughs> Grand opening is October 1st 2022. Hey, there you so go. We hope to our guys are moving in in June So next month and then we'll do the offices and everything. We should be good to go Yep. The outside might not be perfect by then, but we should be mostly good. So October 1st. <laughs> and that's October a, is 1st. that a public thing? That's a public. That's open to the internet. Open to the internet. Yeah, we will have private security here. <laughs> armed private security uh, and Food all that trucks. kind of stuff. Food trucks. It's going to be pretty cool. So mark your calendars. Come on down. Fairfield County, Carroll, Ohio. All right. You'll, you'll, if you hear about it, you're invited. That's kind of be the policy. By the way, I'll put a little plug in here because they won't do it from themselves. But if you want to sponsor anything here, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, anybody, that wall we do have some packages available uh, to help pay for the place and to and be part of the the whole experience for hardscape academy or or you know even on and landscape day-to-day -day operations with yeah. all the social media stuff so yeah thank you brian well i can't wait one day to be back there hanging out uh in the sandbox with you guys doing something back there working on equipment messing around i think once the school opens up that you guys are putting together it's going to be pretty awesome so we're really excited we've got a ton of great feedback of people because we sell online training courses to watch but there's still something to be said for actually laying your hands on, on materials and building yourself and doing that. And that's what we're gonna host is hands on if you want, but otherwise we're gonna be doing like actual live build classes uh, that people can come to during the winter. We're gonna host a bunch through the winter and then a few through the summer kind of deal. Cause again, that's just the seasonality end of when people have more time. And uh, we wanna help uh, train the whole industry to build better hardscapes. So that's our goal. All right, man. Well, we'll button up right here. I don't think we need any uh, extra uh, from me. So where can people find you guys and go down the rabbit hole? But congrats again. And uh, but where can you. people find you if they want to keep up on the build? Well, thank you, Brian, for coming down. Let's be part of your tour. We're awful happy to share it. And uh, on all the social media channels, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, all this stuff, at Almond Landscape. Uh, you'll find us there, almondlandscape.com, and uh, we do have a, a thing. It's no Fullerton Unfiltered podcast, but uh, we, we do our little stab at the Kid Contractor podcast as well. So awesome. thank you, Brian. All right, guys. Uh, anything that you want to add really quick? If not, we'll wind it up. I'll take, let me, let me say this. This, we're an overnight success 20 years later. This, this took me 10 years longer than it should have because I was an idiot in my first company. But if, you're, if you have goals, <laughs> <laughs> Be diligent and work hard towards them and you'll get there. But it's going to take hard work and it's going to take diligence. You can work super hard and not get anywhere. you got to be diligent with that hard work too. So be smart with your money and and just set a goal and go after it. And, and you can get wherever you want to be too. Awesome. Miss Britt, anything? No, you said it. All right, there you go. Well, guys, thanks again. And uh, don't forget to give them a subscribe on YouTube and then also check out the podcast. Thanks again, guys. We'll see you later. Thank you, Thank Brian. You.